So my name is Tristan Jackson Pate. I'm a writer, director, and Song of the Summer is a passion project of mine that's been in the work for six years. It's all based on an amazing summer of my life I had here in Northampton in 2006. I'm from the town, and I suppose I came of age here that summer, playing in bands around uh, the town and Northamptonshire itself. And it was in the early days of MySpace, so I was able to look back at the end of that year and see that I'd played over 200 gigs uh, in these original bands. So many a, a um, sweaty, sticky floored back room. Uh, and the dream is that actually having developed the script for six years and then worked with Royal and Durngate to bring it to life at the Picture Drone venue, we're now doing it in a genuine venue that I played at the time. Um, so it all feels incredibly special and personal, but I guess the joyful part of making the show in the last couple of weeks has been about bringing the professional cast into it, but also a load of contemporary teenagers who are the age I was then and bringing them into the rich world of music, uh, which is still thriving and exciting in Northampton to this day. Yeah. And where did that kind of, I know you said it kind of going back to your kind of roots a bit, but when did the idea for it to become a, a theatre piece come from? Yeah, it's really hard to trace, actually. I think I was talking to my musical director about this this morning because it's such a long time ago. I think I started writing it in 2016, so I was about 10 years away from 2006 then. Mm -hmm. And in that time, I'd had this amazing musical experience, but then I'd ultimately decided I wanted to be an actor. And I'd gone to drama school and I'd worked a bit and I'd had a couple of kids. And so I felt like enough time had passed and settled that I could look back on this time fondly, but also treat it a bit like a research project. So I think there was a moment really when I'd, I'd written a couple of adaptations and I'd written um, shows for, for youth theatres and things like that, but I'd never written anything really original and personal. And I thought if I'm going to write something that's really original and pour all my time and heart into it, it's got to be about music and bands because that's been such a part of my story. And I suppose the other thing was that I was, I think I was generally have always been trying to write or to make something that I haven't seen before. I have seen some great examples of films which do this, the coming of age story about a band, but I've never seen that on stage where you see the band come together, the rise and the fall, but you also feel immersed in the, in the gig aspects and you feel like you can in one moment be in an intimate practice room where you're hearing a band create music and the next moment you're bam on the main stage and it's all happening. So again, the picture drone has been a really big part of working out how this plays as a kind of immersive gig theater experience. Yeah, and then you've just touched on it, roll on to the next question. As you say, it's immersive gig theatre. How have you kind of gone about staging it? Yeah, well, it's been a really collaborative process, actually. So I've got a brilliant designer, Vic Spearing, uh, who's worked with me. And obviously my musical director, Adrian, I just mentioned, has been a really big part of it as well. I think for us, thinking about the audience being stood as you are at a gig has guided the whole process. So thinking about keeping them engaged and focused and keeping the action moving has been really key. So within the picture drone, if local people know it, it's got that amazing main stage where all the gig lighting is focused. But we're also creating a smaller satellite stage in the other half of the venue, which is like the, the practice room that the band inhabit, which was a, a carpet shop for me on Welly Road. Yeah. Back in um, but we're also using the bar. There are scenes that happen at a bar and there's a physical bar in the venue, so why not use that? There's a, a staircase going up to the lighting box, which represents the fire escape out the back of the band's practice room. So the action's constantly moving everywhere and, and our um, ensemble of young people are a big part of that as well. The lead character has um, writes a diary, an angsty teenage diary, which may or may not be slightly based on my own teenage mm -hmm. diaries. And uh, the young people uh, bring the diary to life. So. Uh, those moments are, are really exciting transitional moments where we integrate live music with physical theatre and kind of complex text as well. So they've been some of the biggest challenges, but I suppose some of the most exciting moments where you feel like you're really creating that atmosphere of a gig for the audience in the space. Um, but ultimately, we want the audience to have whatever experience they want to have. I think it works in, in one of two ways. You can either be an audience member who uh, follows the action and walks to different areas of the space to get a closer look, or you can find a place where you feel comfortable and prop yourself up there for the show and you'll see everything too. So it's really up to, up to you whether you want to get down the front when the music kicks off or whether you want to uh, remain, you know, a bit cooler at the back. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and as you kind of touched on already, 
the kind of the professional artists as well as the local artists. How important was it to get the local people in? Oh, super important. Well, because it's such a local story, you know, and I, I'm sure that there are other amazing scenes in other towns and cities across across the county. But for me, this this town is truly special. You know, I, I, as part of my research, I went and spoke to old friends, Paul at Stalker Studio and Jane, and who runs Performing Room, all people who have been around doing music stuff here. And it's thriving as much as it was. I mean, Paul told me that he has about 40 different bands rehearsing in his studios every week that's just not the case in other places i've been to yeah. um there there is just this amazing inclusivity to the scene as well that i always felt as a younger person whenever i got out there and started playing gigs at the racehorse now the black prince or uh, or the crispin or the soundhouse venues that have sadly gone um there were always more experienced older bands who would welcome you and throw an arm around the shoulder and help you find contacts and point in the right direction to go somewhere else and it's been so clear doing my research this time around that that still exists and is thriving so that local element is super important and getting those young people many of whom have an interest in music um but because of the pandemic have not had the experience of going to gigs in some of these venues i feel like actually the process of working with them both through outreach in schools and colleges and then this core group of young people who've been with us at royal and derngate and will perform in the show has just been opening their eyes up to what's on their doorstep and i think if there's one legacy i want this project to have it's that i know a number of them are already forming bands together and i want them to go out and enjoy that scene but i also want them to just feel like gig venues are a safe and an interesting place for them to go um, where you can make friends and be yourself in the same way that I think youth theatre is so precious. So yeah, the local aspect of it is super important to me. And you've kind of obviously said about yourself, kind of music's been a big part of your life, but if you had to pick one, who's been the best gig you've seen live? What a question. <laughs> <laughs> so I was a serial goer to Reading Festival, Reading or Leeds Festival for many years. I definitely feel that those years are probably behind me. I'm more of a, a, a genteel yeah. <laughs> music festival. <laughs> They're quite messy teenage affairs, aren't they? Yeah. But I have to say, so I'd probably take a gig from one of those uh, runs between somewhere like 2004 and 2009. And the ones that are standing out to me just as an immediate impression is I saw Queens of Stone Age at Reading sometime maybe 2005 on the songs for the deaf tour and that just absolutely blew my mind i just lost myself completely in it i'm not much of a mosher but i absolutely mm -hmm. moshed to that game. it just <laughs> felt so right i also saw pixies there maybe in a different year i saw the white stripes there who were who were mind-blowing but you know what one of the great things about this show is there are amazing bands in northampton in the 2000s, some of whom, of course, the departure, the moons have gone on to, to have, you know, notable careers and toured internationally. But there were also just loads of other great bands I've genuinely loved and loved going to see who don't exist anymore. They're all grown ups and they're living their own lives, much like my teenage bands. But I have so many amazing memories of watching The Real Rabitskin or um, Tanau or Enki and just feeling so, I guess that communal spirit that you feel when you're at a gig and you're all feeling it together. And I have loads of them. I have, I have those memories in venues all over the town, the labor club. Um, and I, I was able to take our cast of actors who, you know, are in their early twenties and, and, and are not from the area on a little research trip where we essentially did a pub crawl and saw mm -hmm. all those places and they're still there and alive and kicking. And it was amazing to just look back on them and think, yeah, that legacy continues to this day. That, that there's young people feeling those feelings in those venues week in, week out. And you've already described it as a passion project, but now it's a week away and it's like say, it's six years in the working. How does it feel to be so close to opening night? Oh gosh, it's surreal. Yeah, I think it's probably the one artistic thing I've put the most hours of my life in out of anything I've ever done. Um, so in some ways it feels like the stakes are high, but in other ways, I think as a writer, as a director, as a producer, a big part of your job happens on your own and it's all, almost quite solitary and you can get in your own head and you can think, is it going to work? Is it not going to work? But actually the, the process of putting on the play, of coming together for four weeks, bringing a creative team around the table, introducing actors to the world, them taking on the, uh, the characters themselves and finding their own journey, that is so encouraging because it doesn't become about you anymore. So I think 
I feel great about it because it really feels like a shared endeavor with those young people and with those professionals. So really my job is nearly done and I'm just gonna get it into the venue and I'm gonna sit back and watch it and smile every night. That's my plan. And what do you want an audience member to take away from the show? Oh, I'd love the audience members to feel like they've been in the band, I think. I think anyone who's been in a band will relate to it massively, but also anyone who's tried to, uh, their own creative endeavour with their friends, whether that's an art club or uh, writing a play or just going to a drama class. I think there's something about it, which I hope is really universal and it isn't just rooted in the middle of the 2000s, about friendship and artistry and creativity being the glue that binds. So I want our audience to feel that as well. I want them to feel like they were part of the rise and the sadness of seeing the fall is there, but the ultimate coming together at the end of rocking out in a venue <laughs> and going out blinking into the sunshine. I, I want them to feel all the feelings as much as anything. Yeah, and I ask everyone this when I do an interview, what does theatre slash performing mean to you? Oh, means everything to me. I started out as an actor and I think I thought that would always be my path. And in recent years, I very comfortably feel on the other side of it. But it's, it's, it's all about collaboration. It's all about trust and finding community with a group of artists. And it's when I feel the most alive, I suppose. I, I think we're all chasing that feeling. The characters talk about it in the play, the, chasing the feeling you get when you connect musically with someone and you create art together. It's just the biggest buzz. And then to open it up and share it with a load of people who don't know what they're gonna get is just a thrill. So it's everything. <laughs> and my final question for you is simply, why should anyone come see Song of the Summer? I think if you're local to Northampton, you probably know how special this town is and how special the musical scene is here. You're going to get lots from it. I've met a lot of people of my generation, some of whom were in bands or were actively involved in the scene, but others who surprised me, who all have heady memories of those days. Um, but I also think it's universal. I think if you were in bands in the 70s or 80s, you're going to recognise the dynamics at play in a band and, and, and that friendship versus artistic integrity argument. I think if you're a young person today and you've been starved of the opportunity to go to see live music and to go to theatre throughout COVID, this is the show for you too. It's welcoming and friendly. It's No one should feel like they're going to be put on the spot or dragged up on stage. It's not immersive in that way. It's there to, to welcome you and the, the characters are lovable and we want you to go on a journey with them. So I guess in answer to your question, I've just described every group of people and why they, should, why they will have a great experience. But I think that's it. Yeah. We've got quite a diverse group of young people. They're working with a diverse creative team and a team of actors, but we all feel bonded by the love of the music and the creating together. And that's how I want our audience to feel too. Brilliant. That wraps up brilliantly. So thank you for your time. Song of the Summer is coming to the Picture Drome in Northampton, as you say, from Thursday the 11th till Sunday the 21st of August. Everyone should come and check it out.